Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, I'm just going to be playing in a little bit of makeup and giving you a story time of whenever I was a paranormal investigator. Um, this was whenever I lived out in Vegas for a couple years from like 2008 to 2010. And I, this was during my space days, so it just so happened that I fall on to Paranormal Research Society's uh, fan page and they were doing a meetup out in Trout Lake, Washington and I'll put some pictures up here of what it looked like and um, it was a UFO investigation now I'm a huge skeptic but I'm also a believer now I didn't see any aliens or anything like that um, we did see a lot of satellites. They had some kind of technology where they could see if there were satellites or if they were actual, like, ships in the sky. Um, there was a lot of, ooh, ah, is that a spaceship type crap? And I was like, oh my goodness. But I got to meet, um, Paranormal State, Ryan Buell, and, uh, his team, and they were amazing people, like-minded people and it kind of started me off the adventure of being a paranormal investigator because as soon as I did that I wanted to investigate more and I started um, my company Mystic Canvas and ended up doing a blog and things like that but that was ages ago I still have the website but I just took it down for now so anyways after meeting Ryan and his team, we ended up going to the Stanley Hotel and to Gettysburg, and then I wanted to find my own team. So when I lived in Vegas, I went on to meetup.com and searched witches, tarot, paranormal investigators, and ended up meeting a few people and then my team at the end. Uh, but the first couple of people I met were these sisters that were twins and they wore their sunglasses at night and they wore gloves. I think they had like some kind of skin situation going on, but that's whatever. But they looked like the lady from Poltergeist that would say, this house is cleansed. They were, they were weirdos, straight up. Um, and, that, you know, weird's fine and everything, I'm weird, but their morals and their, the way they wanted to investigate was just not my cup of tea, so um, I decided not to meet back up with them, but who knows where I'd be if I chose to have that as my team. I ended up meeting a gentleman named Warren and ended up also meeting my partner, Sherry, in a medium. Um, and that was basically our core, was me and Sherry Warren and the medium. I'm not going to name her name because I don't, I don't know what she's doing with her life now. I know what they're doing. I still keep in contact with Warren and Sherry, so. Um, when we stayed at the Stanley, it was a beautiful hotel, but, uh, I didn't get a lot of activity, but it was like a neat air quote vacation, so to speak. So, uh, I'll post some pictures of the Stanley. If you don't know what the Stanley is, it is where Stephen King wrote The Shining in Colorado. And then also, when we went to Gettysburg with Paranormal State, uh, there was a lot of activity, but nothing major. Uh, there was a lot of history there, and that was one of the funnest trips that I've ever been on next to going to London and Paris when I was like 18, but anyways, so Stanley, Gettysburg, we got to actually go stay at the Washoe Club or investigate the Washoe Club and that's in Nevada and Ghost Adventures did an episode there and that is like one of the best pieces of ed evidence that there is something else out there is what they call it and you can 
YouTube that if you want to check that out. And there was tons of activity there. Um, I got so drained one night that I had to go out to the car and take a nap because I literally could not keep my head up. There was so much activity there and it was run down. We, um, we were allowed to be there, but they weren't doing any more investigations there because of how dangerous it is. But we could see like just shadow people constantly. I mean, it was so active there. We also uh, got to go to this insane asylum out in Utah, and I'll post some pictures here of what that looked like. And we got a lot of activity there. Uh, there was this instance where we heard somebody like scream bloody murder in the hall, and we still couldn't figure out what it was. But the insane asylum was shut down. But next to it was a old folks home, so we couldn't like debunk it to see if that was, you know, something from over there or whatever. But in that place, I was the cameraman and I would stay on, I would stay against the wall and sit on the floor and film here and here. And I would only have my viewfinder for my night vision camera on and you could see, see it just like people just walking back and forth in between the rooms and it almost felt like somebody would walk up on you and like be in your face that energy of just somebody is in your face and that place was pretty freaking scary and for one it's out in Utah Utah is not the most happening place on earth that's for sure lots of stares and stuff when we went out, but that's fine. I get stared at all the time. I don't care. So yeah, I'll be just be posting a bunch of pictures on this side so y'all can see what kind of stuff that I saw. Um, so me and my team wanted to find a place in Vegas that we could investigate, you know, all the time. So we didn't have to, for one, spend money on so much travels and all that, but something out of convenience. You know, hey, it's, you know, it's Tuesday night, you want to go investigate? We're like, yeah, let's do that. So, our medium found this place called Armagosa Opera House and Hotel. And this was out in Death Valley Junction, about two hours out of Vegas. And the Opera House, I mean, it was running, you know, shows and stuff still, but the lady that was a retired ballerina... Uh, she stayed in a little house um, out and back, but uh, she had two caretakers, and they were boyfriend-girlfriend, but they looked like brother-sister. <laughs> they were just very strange people. For one, to be a caretaker for a rundown hotel out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, do your thing, I guess, but... Um, so we got to investigate there all the time, and I'll just give you a little bit of the stories of what we dealt with while we were there. There is a graveyard that's off, um, the land a little bit, and we try to investigate there, but for the most part, what we found, or what I've found, is that graveyards are pretty peaceful for the most part. So we would just investigate the rundown part of the hotel. Now the hotel itself is still up and running. There would be lots of transient people um, coming in and out of Vegas. Lots of foreigners um, that would, you know, for some reason, lots of French people and British people that would stay there before they're leaving or going to Vegas. Who knows? And they they just loved it there. I'm like, this is one of the most haunted places I've ever investigated. And y'all are just staying here, la di da, drinking your wine at 7 p.m. on the patio. That's fine. Do your thing. So, um, <clears throat> the rundown part of the hotel. Uh, the history is lots of coal miners and prostitutes. 
that uh, would stay there and the place in general is just eerie super old but had its charm too like the opera house when we would investigate in the opera house itself like we would see blinking orbs all over the place and um, but I mean it was relatively peaceful there we didn't I mean we found evidence but nothing that was like nothing that made me question my faith which is some of the stuff I'm about to tell you about we stayed in a part of the hotel or when we investigated the part of the hotel that was run down there were um, these hallways and you could see the hotel rooms you know that ran down the hallways and we would have our back to an open room and you could just it felt like you were about to get drug inside the room like there was this one ghost in particular that we always talked about and his nick nickname was boss man and he was very very negative very angry ghost so um, we're filming one day and we're in an area where there is this bathroom and one of the first rules as being a paranormal investigator is to not run because you don't want to get away from your team you don't want to fall and hurt yourself I mean it's pitch black it's four in the morning the place is totally run down so I've got my back to the wall and all I can see in, in my viewfinder is just shadows just coming back and forth back and forth and then down the hallway it sounds like there's something running towards us and flipping tables like Hulk style and I just put my back to the wall and our medium is like don't run I'm like I'm not running anywhere and I just close my eyes and I'm just waiting for something to come up on me and just like I don't know what we're scared of other than the unknown but I don't know if I was afraid to get hurt or what was gonna happen but it, it was one of the scariest things I've ever endured in my entire life. Just imagine a big man running towards you, flipping tables, like, what's next? So, that's one of the things that we caught on camera. And um, the second thing we caught on camera is after that, we were kind of debriefing. And we went back to the hotel part that was still up and running. And we sat around this round table and kind of talked about the evening. And all of a sudden, it sounded like a gun went off. It was a boom. And it was like all in a row, me and then Sherry, then Warren. And I was like, what the fuck? And Sherry's like, what the hell? And then Warren's like, oh my god. And we still try to figure out what that noise was, but I caught that on camera too. <clears throat> if I can find these videos if I can find these videos then I will post them on my channel but the, I'm pretty sure they're in my laptop which is not working right now but I'm going to try to get it refurbished because it's a good computer but anywho the hotel itself I mean, you had experiences left and right. It was always something going on. So I always tried to have cameras up constantly. So yeah, there's some of the stories that I endured whenever I was a paranormal investigator. Link down below is my old channel. And you can see some of the videos if you want to check those out. Um, but yeah, I'll try to find the other ones in my computer and see where we can go from there. Um, I don't think I'm going to finish this makeup. I think I'm just going to roll with it. This is the third time filming it. First time the audio is messed up. The second time it, it was corrupted. So this is the third time me doing it. But I just kind of wanted to tell you all a little bit about my history and being a paranormal investigator. And I will put up pictures, of course, of everything that went on. So anyways, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was somewhat entertaining. I will do another story time on me being a paranormal investigator in the future, but uh, in the meantime, please like and subscribe before you leave, and I will see you all on the flip side. Bye!